are doing great and I hope all of you had a good night's rest. So for today, we are going to begin with a poem from your main course textbook. Okay, now before I begin, I need to ask you a few questions. Okay, so have you ever seen a snake and a mongoose fighting? Or have you seen a snake slithering as you walk in the park? Or at times, have you seen a snake swimming in the water? Have you? Okay, so with this note, let me introduce you to the title of the poem. Garden Snake. So before we begin, let's see the outline of the poem. Right, the first we have the introduction to the poem, about the poet, the explanation of the poem and then about the poem. As we know the title of the poem, let me give you a short introduction about the poem. Right, so the poet for us of this particular poem, Garden Snake, is Muriel L. Sun. Okay. Now, normally when we say or when we hear the word snake, we automatically get scared. Everybody gets scared. Why? Because we believe that snakes are dangerous and snakes are venomous. But actually, that's not true. Some of the snakes are venomous and dangerous. Some of them are not. Okay. So in this poem, the poet tells us his experience of encountering a garden snake. So without further ado, let's get into the poem. So about the poet, who is the poet for us? It is Muriel L. Sun. I repeat it again. Muriel L. Sun. He was born on October 31st, 1913, and he passed away on February 23rd, 1990. Known were. Now, this particular poem, The Garden Snake, is one of the most known works of the poet Muriel L. Sun. Okay, now in this poem, he tells us about a snake and its effects on humans. He also describes how majestic these living beings look. Now let's get to the recitation of the poem. I saw a snake and ran away. Some snakes are dangerous, they say. But mother says that kind is good and eats up insects for his food. So when he wiggles in the grass, I stand aside and watch him pass. And tell myself there's no mistake. It's just a harmless garden snake. Written by Muriel L. Sun. Let me explain the poem in detail to you. I saw a snake and ran away. Some snakes are dangerous, they say. So the poet over here happens to see a snake. He gets so scared of the snake that he runs away. He runs away from the place. Okay. And he says that I've heard that snakes are dangerous. Other people have told me that the snakes are dangerous. But mother says that kind is good and eats up insects for his food. 
So the poet goes on to say that his mother had told him that not all snakes are poisonous and the snake which he had encountered is of the good, is on the good side. That particular snake is a good one and the snake only eats up insects for his food and he does not attack any other animal. So, his mother is advising him, saying that the garden snake is just a harmless snake. So, when he wiggles in the grass, I'll stand aside and watch him pass. So, the poet says that when he wiggles, wiggles means when the snake is moving up and down. Wiggles moving up and down. So, when the snake is moving up and down in the grass, he says that he will stand aside. That means he will move away. He will just give some space for the snake to go away and he would watch him pass. That means he would give way for the snake to go and he would stand at the side and look him or look at him going away from that particular place. And tell myself there's no mistake. It's just a harmless garden snake. The poet says that he would convince himself saying that there's no mistake and this particular snake is just a harmless garden snake. The poet also says that there is no need to tremble with fear or run away from the garden snake. So children, you need to remember that this is a short poem written by the poet Muriel L. Sun. Now this poem tells us about his personal encounter with a garden snake. Okay, now this is a beautiful poem, a very simple poem written with a proper rhyme scheme. So let's see more about the poem and the techniques used in the poem. About the poem. Now the poem is an octave. It's called an octave. Why? Because it has eight lines. Okay? Eight lines together. Okay? And if it gives a central idea in poetry that is called as an octave. Okay? The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, A, B, B, C, C and D, D. Okay? This is the rhyme scheme of a typical octave. This is the rhyme scheme. It has to be like that when it is an octave. Okay? So, the poet here has followed the rules of poetry writing. As in, the poem is an octave which has eight lines and the strict rhyme scheme is followed. Now, children, we have already seen the recitation of the poem the explanation and why the poem is unique. I have already taught you what a rhyme scheme is in the previous poems. I hope you remember that. Now, what I want you children to do is mark the rhyme scheme for this poem. In your textbook, mark the rhyme scheme of this poem. I have given the clues for you. So, let's see how many of you are able to do it. So, that's it for this video children. 
any doubts you have you may clarify that in your interactive session so have a great day children